Hello, um, today we will be trying out this cushion, which I'm surprised I'm just now doing, uh, because it's been out for so, not so long, I need to calm down, for a while, for a while. The Misha Original Tension Pack. There's like four of them, uh, I don't know, I don't know why there needs to be four versions. Um, I got the one, what is this, this the Pour, Pour Perfect Cover, in number 23, I'm number 23, out of three shades, the deepest one. All the claims are in Korean, but at this point, we're just gonna see if it works and it looks great. So that's what matters at the end of the day, to be honest. The packaging is really cute. Typical um, cushion packaging, but you've got like this sort of double layer top. That doesn't matter. This one makes it easier to take it off, so. Mm. I don't know, this whole Misha aesthetic is very like Chongnam Dong Ajuma to me, so. But you know what? That's just my issue. It's my problem. Uh, um. I don't know if I should be worried because it's already like leaking, not leaking, but the product's already coming through the net. When I had the Etude House one, it was completely clean. I don't know. It was sealed though, so maybe they're all they're, maybe they're all just like that. I did review one other tension pack to the Etude House one if you're interested in that. I'll link it up here. Maybe if if I forget to, please someone yell at me. I'm assuming this is supposed to be the highest coverage one. It, uh, this apparently is the the number one, not number one seller, but like out of the four, this is the most popular because we all have pores to cover, apparently. So let's do one side of the face first. Oh my god, that's so weird. Can you see that? It's not, it's still a little bit uh, oily feeling like the Etude House one was. So I don't know if this is gonna be like a matte, this might be another dewy finish one. So we will see, we will see. Maybe it's just because of the formula that it's that way, but... Oh shit, is that too much? Hmm, that might have been too much. According to several people, this is like, Amazing because y'all I hated not hated. I didn't really care for the Etude House one But apparently I didn't start off on a good foot with the tension ones by starting off with that one I think Yongook told me that this one is like amazing Let me lift up my hair oh, There's some power for makeup bullshit. All right, so there's like one layer on this side of my face the color match is pretty good for me. I'm like a Mac NC25. Um, please ignore that. I still have this fucking STD looking thing. So far, it looks really good. Um, it looks very skin-like. It doesn't look like I have anything on my skin at all. Um, but the coverage is decent. Still a tiny bit of redness. Just a, just a tad bit of redness here that I would want to cover up. But for the most part, it's pretty much concealed like the overall redness. I can see my freckles a little bit on the tops of my cheeks. But yeah, it's quite a thin formula. It's, does it doesn't feel heavy like the Etude House one. That one felt really heavy. Let me try adding a little bit more. That looks really good. That looks really good. I like that. I have a feeling it's gonna settle into my fine lines though because it's already settle settling into my really fine lines out of my eyes. But I will add um, powder anyway, so that should alleviate that problem, because I always powder under my eyes no matter what. Although the formula thin, it really does seem like a little goes a long way, because I didn't really need to push in there, just like, kind of tapped on the top. Oh shit, let me put it down my neck, because I have unevenness on my neck. And this demon right here. Pretty good. Um, the cushion though feels really thin. Feels like really cheap to be honest, but I mean as long as it works right, as long as it works. My favorite is, like I've said like three million times, is the pony effect one because it's a really squishy, thick dough so it feels like I'm using like a beauty blender on my face. Okay, I'm gonna work on the other side. Oh, and by the way, the finish of this is like a demi matte. It's matte, but it's not matte like a kind of, what is like a Etude House real powder cushion matte. You know what I mean? Like really, not drying, but just like matte matte, you know, it looks like skin matte. Like, you know when you put a moisturizer on, you let it sit there for a while, and it absorbs into the skin? It's that kind of matte. Alright, so I evened out my skin tone on this side, and what I'm noticing is that, well, one here definitely, I, <coughs> I put some on here, um, on my blemish, but you can still see it. 
And then I've got two. This, this one is hyperpigmentation from a spot I had last week. And then this one up here is an actual blemish. And as you can see, it doesn't really cover those. Um, of course, I didn't put too much on, on those spots. Let me see if I add a little bit more. They covered them all right, I guess. But I have a feeling because the formula is thin, it's just gonna like wear off of the spot really quickly. Um, on a normal basis, I would be covering that up with a regular uh, cream type concealer. Anyway, do you see that right there? Do you see that right here? Already creasing. It's hard to get with with these with cushions. It's really hard to get around the nose. Well, for me at least, because my nose is so damn big. The crevices around my nose are really deep. So I lightened up a little bit, but it doesn't cover it up like the way a concealer would. So I would probably rate this at like maybe a medium to like going towards full but not like medium full if that makes sense. If we're saying sheer is like 0% and then full coverage is like 100, it would be at about like a 65% I suppose or maybe like a 70. Overall the, the finish is really pretty, it's very natural looking, very skin like. I forgot to mention that all I have is just my skincare. That's definitely a factor. You want to make sure your skincare is on point so that your makeup looks decent at least. But for the most part, it's it's all right. I'm not blown away or anything, but for what the product that it is, it's pretty good, especially compared to the fucking Etude House one. Oh my god. This one has more coverage and it's not heavy and sticky feeling. All right, so I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup. I will add concealer under my eyes and powder just under here, because I know it's, go it's gonna crease there. I know it's gonna crease. So I will be right back. Why do I look dark under the eyes? It's supposed to be blush. <laughs> I done fucked up! So with like the concealer that I put under my eyes, and I did bake, I baked just under my eyes, um, the skin is looking pretty good. I would probably attribute that to the concealer and powder itself, but you know, we'll see because whenever I use a foundation I like and I powder, my skin looks great all day, but there are definitely some foundations that will like, even despite the bake, will fuck up, so hopefully this shit does not do that. So I'm gonna test this out and I'll see you in my next update. Right now it is basically one o'clock, so. All right, this is how she's looking in natural day. Oh, bitch, I really should have checked the concealer I was wearing. It's too fucking dark. Shit. What the fuck I'm doing? Hi, I'm Edward Vila and I'm a beauty girl. <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna fucking bother me the rest of the day. Oh my god, that looks so bad. Okay, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a really light powder. I'm gonna put that on top. Okay, that's a little better. It's a little better. But at this point, I put so much powder on, like, what's the point in really testing out this product? Uh, but it's okay. We'll see how it works throughout the day. And then after that, I'll test it out again for a few more days. I'll give you an update via just this camera. But for now, it looks this is this is how it's looking. Hi guys, it's Oh my god, I almost said it's Kato Potato here. It's Edward. Um, 5.10 p.m. Not that I need to like prove it to you. But it's, I took a nap. I fell asleep. Just woke up. I've had it for what, four hours at this point? Yeah, four hours. Four hours? And uh, it looks the same. Probably because I was baking. <laughs> but um, around my nose, you can see that it's getting a little oily. What that's telling me is that if that's oily, if I did not powder, it'd probably be like a little shinty at the- A little shinty at this point. This update probably wasn't that important. Oh, I forgot to mention, I didn't powder my neck. And you saw how I put a little bit- I didn't put concealer in there, so I put a little bit of the cushion there. Um, but that completely just rubbed off already, so um, I think that's an testament to how it would be on like unpowdered skin, on like blemishes, I guess. Uh, cause I feel like on my neck, if I put makeup there, it kind of stays there the whole day. It doesn't really like move around. But that's just me. That's just me. It is 7:25 p.m. Um, I was outside in the cold, like, and it was windy as hell. So on camera, it probably looks worse, but in person, it looks fine. I was worried it's gonna be a little like really dry and start cracking, but it looks pretty good. Hi, Andy. Hi, I'm friends of Andy. Friends. I don't know what else to say. It, it's fine. Um, oh, I forgot to mention earlier that on my forehead, where I had also applied it, I let it set for a little bit, so it actually turned a very matte finish. Um, not super dry matte, but like just a matte rather than more like a demi matte. So, um, yeah, I don't know. She's back home. It is 10, it is basically 11. Good God. Wano's hair is so blonde, 
it's it's covering the numbers. Anyway, it's ten, nearly basically eleven o'clock. So now I know I baked under my eyes, and that really helps long long get long, longevity of my makeup. However, on the parts that I did not touch with powder, mainly long here, yeah, long around here, and also my forehead. My forehead looks fine, honestly, but along here, it's starting to do like. Well, one, it faded here. Um, you can see where my red spots are. Two, um, it's starting to like break apart. I'm quite like expressive, and so I get uh, lines across my face going this way. Let me see if I can like zoom y'all in. Do you see this? Right here? I really hope you can see that. I don't know if you can see it. Right here? Do you notice it? Am I the only one? Anyway, it doesn't look that great. Basically, it's doing what a lot of really matte foundations tend to do, which is start to get really... Like right now, it doesn't feel drying. In fact, it feels it feels like my skin's natural oils are starting to push through, which is fine. I mean, it's not oily or anything, but it does that thing where... Because matte foundations tend to be have like a powdery finish, but that can end up looking like makeup on the skin, you know what I mean? So it definitely looks like makeup on the skin because it's starting to like look like it's sitting on top of the skin now at them. I don't know, I can't explain it. It's settling into my smile line here. Yeah, I mean, other than like this area, it looks totally fine. So next time I would probably set my entire face with powder. It lasted about as long as, you know, a regular foundation would. Um, it's not looking as dry and cakey as it would have, as I thought it would have been in this cold, dry weather. So it did pretty well. Around the corners of my nose where I tend to get really oily and where I didn't put that much powder, to be honest. It's like, it's breaking down, like it's not really there anymore. <laughs> Just like at the very inner creases of my nose, like several other foundations, like the Pony Effect one, the second one she came out with the gold packaging. It's one of those foundations that need to be set, for me at least, for my oily skin, it needs to be set. Um, it Because it looks like without being set, it just lasts like a regular foundation would. Um, nothing that mind-blowing but if you're only going to be out for a few hours then it's totally fine it looks great if you're gonna be out as long as i have which is about 10 hours which i guess is considered like a long time i suppose that um it lasts all right so yeah it's, it's okay it's all right and i'm not mind blown or anything hey guys quick update because i'm actually editing the video right now i tested the foundation for several more days and well one it didn't break me out or anything but two just as i confirmed from the first day that i tried it it's definitely a uh, cushion, foundation, whatever you want to call it, that for me, being an oily skin person uh, around my whole face, I used to think that was like combination, but it's, I think it's generally my whole face. You'd either need to use a good primer, or you need to set it really well with powder, or you don't, or both. Alone, it's just very, in terms of like wearability, it's very average. For some, of course, that's me with oily skin. Some people uh find the, the thing like it wears all day for them but uh that's probably more for like normal to dry skin. if you have normal to dry skin um i think it would be good because even though it's a uh i also noticed that it's very matte in finish uh, it reminds me a lot of the cleo kill cover cushion but it's not drying um it has it's almost it's like very creamy in a way it's hard to explain but uh, i think that's just the texture of it being like a cream under that filter thing so it's pretty good for any skin type but if you have oily skin, I would prime and or set with powder. So yeah, but other than that, the coverage is still, I still feel the same about. Um, I would probably still use a concealer with very like stubborn blemishes that um, like are raised a little bit and that tend to like eat off the product or the product rubs off. There is my little review of the Misha Tension Pact. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll try to answer them. And I will see you up in my next video, okay? Okay. Bye. Thank you.